Advait, tu mara screen ma shuni. And less than a minute. Okay, and here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, Hello everybody. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Deepak. Hello, Eric. Hi, everyone. Hi, Markan. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everybody. Everything. Yeah. Everything, yeah. Hi, Eric. All right, friends. Well, welcome to Stamp Chat. My name is Heidi. I'm with the American Philatelic Society. Thank you so much for joining us. We still have a few other member new people coming in. Um, I'd like to again welcome you to our Stamp Chats. We've been hosting these daily and hopefully we'll continue to have them. So do check in often at stamps.org. You can check the daily schedule offered Monday through Friday. Um, we have a very special guest with us today, Mark Ndave, with he's a fellow with the Royal Philatelic Society of London, joining us from India, hence the 11 a.m. Eastern start time. Typically, we have uh, our stamp chats at 3 p.m. Eastern or 7 p.m., but if you're joining us from a very internet, you know, a, an extreme time zone, then we're more than welcome to, uh, we're more than happy to make those concessions. I'd like to thank all of the APS members for your generous support and continued support during this time. Um, it's because of your generosity and your continued commitment to membership that we can bring you these great presentations and the current news. And the, uh, we, we have our digital library available to all right now. So if you have not checked out stamps.org, I, I do encourage you to do so. Without further <coughs> Uh, the American Philatelic Society would like to introduce Mr. Mark Ndave, who will be speaking to us about the India 1854 two on a stamp, one on a watermark today. Friends, I do encourage you, if you're not mute, muted, um, I will mute you, uh, but if you go ahead and mute your mics, we appreciate that. Um, when it's time for Q&A and discussion at the end of the uh, Mark and Dave's talk, then you can either raise your hand using the Zoom function or put your question in the chat box. I'm, I'm happy to read it unless you want to just put in your chat box, I have a question. And if you're not camera shy or you're not shy to go on audio, by all means, you, you, you're welcome to have the platform. And we can start fairly promptly. So, um, without. Tumko, so thank you again, Martin, for joining us today. And for all of our new friends joining us in from all of the Mute. I'm going to mute all except for Markin. Go ahead. Do that. Go ahead, Markin. Thank you. Yeah, so this is the first from here. And why I have designed this slide in this way that I want to tell something very nice. The magazine American Philatelist, which I have set here as the foundation of the American Philatelic Society. This is the foundation. Here we have the building on the foundation and on the top, we have the American Philatelic Society, which is uh, reflecting the strength of philately all over the world with a capacity of 28,000 members. So this is exactly what I want to convey. And now I'm coming to my subject. I owe my life to my hobbies, especially stamp collecting, said by Franklin Roosevelt. We had in India issued a stamp 
on Mr. Roosevelt. So here I want to establish a connection between America and India. So this is the tribute we gave to a great flatlist who was the president of United States of America. Coming to the subject, very simple presentation. I always start like this that what people expect from my presentation. So here, what you will see in this presentation, you will see the essays, proofs, color trials, the coat of arms watermark paper number three for two on a stamp. You will also see the coat of arms watermark paper number four for half anna, one anna and four anna stamps. So here in the beginning, we are going to discuss two watermarks of coat of arms. I'm saying coat of arms again, paper number three and paper number four. And then we will go to the subject of the one on a watermark where we will discuss the previously published wrong design of the one on a watermark with the double N in ANA. And then we will go in the main subject with the one N in ANA and some features of the one on a watermark, some specimens from the Royal collection usage in Aden and Pondicherry. So here we start. Initially, they had thought for the two designs. One, the square design, which was categorized by Jan Spence as D1, and D2 as the octagonal design. None of this design was approved, but these prints were taken from the copper plates, and they are known as reprints. Now we see some proofs and color trials. So I have this pointer here. So this is the approved essay finally, and this is the design. When it comes to the four anas, people usually say that there is a head and there is a frame. But in case of two anas as well, very few people will know that in two anas also in the beginning when they designed the stamp, the head was designed this way and the frame separately. Here you see some of the proof impressions on the yellowish watermark papers, some more color trials. I'll hold a few seconds so people can enjoy it. And they all are listed in, in the book of Spence. Yesterday, my friend from California did a good presentation in uh, Philaminars in India. And uh, he saw some of this and he's watching it. I can see his face very carefully. Some more color trials there. Okay, so getting to the main subject. Initially, this work was assigned to Captain Thulier. Since he was busy with the one on a stamp, and also busy with the four anas, which was the first bicolor stamp. The job was assigned to Mr. Snell. Forbes prepared the new design of two anas and the still die was prepared. Printing format was eight into 10 is equal to altogether 80 stamps, eight horizontally and 10 vertically. Altogether, the price of the seat was 10 rupees. And here is one complete sheet for your reference. So this is how the seat looks like. The quantity printed of the stamp is 7 million. The date of the printing is 3rd October 1854. And now listen very carefully. Now I'm taking you a little deep. Half anna, one anna and four annas were printed sideways on paper number four. In case of the four anas, sometimes the paper was trimmed during the close settings, etc. However, this two anna stamp printed on sideways watermark with paper number three. So this is exactly what I want to say. Paper number four, Look at very carefully, here you will see, this is one crest, a big one, a small crest in the center and another big one crest. So altogether there are three crests, okay, horizontally 
and vertically it's only one crest. And this is paper number four on which the half ana, the one ana and the four ana were printed, not the two ana. So the two ana was printed on this watermark paper. Obviously the central design is same. It's stamp office and coat of arms, two lions holding flags, etc. But here you see is paper number three. So this we are talking for the normal stamps, the normal two ana stamps printed like this, okay? Here we have not started uh, touching the subject of one ana. So here you will notice one, two, three, four, five, six crest. So this watermark is different. One and two vertically as well. So when we seen the paper number four, it was only one crest vertically. And to prove it, here is the back scan of the seat. I don't know how many of you will be able to make out from this scan. And that's why I shown you the tracing first. But here, these are six crest. And this is the back scan of the complete sheet of the two anas. And then there were a lot of watermark variety occurred. And people ask me why this watermark varieties, etc. It's very simple. The workers at the printing press were not well educated. It's early stage of the printing, etc. Not even advised to place the paper how it has to be placed. And as a result, we have different watermark varieties. We are enjoying indeed even now. So we should be thankful to them that they did all this unintentionally. So we have as a result inverted, reversed, reversed and inverted watermarks in all of the stamps of the Indian first issue. Now the only stamp with exclusive and unusual watermark variety among all four first issue stamp of India. Yes, that's true. This is the only stamp apart from the half ana, one ana and four ana, which has a watermark variety, an unusual watermark one ana watermark let's see what's next apart from the watermark i have done this reconstructions as well so on the left it's the normal sideways watermark of paper number three on the right i have done the inverted watermark reconstruction still working on the reverse and reverse and inverted which is a very challenging job because the workers have not put the watermark in the reverse direction that often, that's what I have noticed, and reverse and inverted, it's, uh, it's very difficult to find. However, I am working. Okay, now people will ask me a question that why this unusual watermark? Yes, very simple answer, because of the shortage of the normal coat of arms watermark paper number three, and how? They have temporarily reused this fiscal paper of the one ana watermark to print the two ana stamp until the next supply came with the normal coat of arms watermark paper number three. Going to the next, the man who discovered it in 1935. Mr. C.D. Desai is he's known like that in the world of philately a great man. He not only discovered this one ana watermark, he also discovered the substitute transfers in the one ana. And he studied all the first issues in very deeply and with full of interest. And as a result, we still have a lot of uh, varieties, a lot of uh, information in the first issue. And he played a key role. He was also honorary treasurer at the Bombay Stock Exchange and one of the founding director of the Devkaran Nanji Bank, which is now known as Dena Bank. Okay, Mr. Desai sold his collection with Robson Law. He consigned the entire collection in Robson Law. And this is the image of the catalog, Robson Law's auction catalog in 1949. So when I was going through the listing of Robson Law, I noticed in the section of the two Anas that all together, Mr. Desai had 50 examples, including the blocks and pairs and singles, etc. whatever the large multiples he had. Altogether, he had 50 examples. And that was the largest number I have seen so far. 
in anybody's collection. Now, the watermark, the one which is illustrated in the Robson Law auction catalog, which was basically discovered by C.D. Desai. As I said, he is, the he is responsible for this discovery. He is the man who discovered this. So what happened that everybody believed that this is the final design. And then the copy paste tradition by the seniors without paying attention began. First of all, this watermark without uh, even studying it in a detail, copied by Ellie Dawson, then Robson Lowe in 1951, and he used it for his encyclopedia, then the silver key to the golden treasure in 1986, and the book was published by Heinrich Kohler, and it is illustrated, and it comes from my friend's collection, Johann Herrgott, 2010, and Dr. Bateja also used the same illustration and the book was published by David Feldman. But everybody missed one very simple thing, the honest statement of C.D. Desai, which inspired me. He said, he wrote, nothing can be conclusively written in absence of the complete sheet of the one on a watermark paper. And What happened? Looking at the book of Ellie Dawson, this is the watermark he illustrated, the same copy paste tradition. And uh, in his book, Ellie Dawson is writing, Sir Edward Beckon has pointed out too that the letter A of stamp in the band has a pointed top in the number three. And number four papers, but a broad flat top in the one ana. So broad flat top in one ana. Can you see this is the broad flat top? It's not, it's the sharp top. So he is writing in his book that Edward Danny Bacon has said this and he's missing the whole point. The same thing happened here. Look at this top, it's a pointed head. Look at the top again, the pointed head. And when it comes to Robson Lowe's encyclopedia, the information what he has produced here, looking at the top, again wrong. So challenging all these stalwarts is a, is a big thing and to rewrite the entire new history. Here is the complete sheet of the one on a watermark paper. You can see the top, the flat top, as said by Edward Denny Beckon, who was the keeper of the Royal Philatelic Collection and a very senior philatelist. In this dressing, you will have a clear look. See the flat top of the A. And not only this, you will see many things and I will take you a little more deep in the subject with these measurements as well. Anybody wants to take a screenshot of this, you are more than welcome for your reference. I'll hold here for a few seconds. And not only the A, then there are other features as well. Look at this Gothic O. Look at this Ka, which is in Bengali. Here the single N. And here in the previous watermark, it's only Yak in Urdu as they write from the left. And here we have the Ana. The number three, which is not here, it's here within this wavy lines. And then this B183, six control marking. I'm highlighting this because these lines are extended in the one on a watermark only and not in the normal coat of arms paper number three and not even in the paper number four. Now, very interesting. I was uh, studying 
this Robson Law's auction catalog, lot number 525 by C.D. Desai. See, very nice description, very interesting. It's saying a block of four, showing watermark, double lined three. So they are talking about this. In frame at foot of position number 79. So position number 79 usually falls at the bottom of the sheet, as we all know. And they are writing probably part of the new watermark. So they were not sure because CD Desai very honestly said that nothing can be conclusively written in absence of the complete sheet. So all what they were showing, CD Desai had some of the pieces from this central area and he prepared an estimate design, a mosaic, and yeah. he produced yeah. it. However, here also, we have another block of 10 as regards the watermarks of the two Anas denomination, nothing can be conclusively written as we already discussed, is available in a very recent acquisition by the co-author of Mr. S. B. Kotari, a bottom block of 10 with marginal inscriptions as a part of the watermark unknown, which reads 1B1837 in a rectangle of 39 into 19 millimeter below the stamp number 79. Now you see the 79 position, which is at the bottom, here, they also have the position number 79 in the CD, they size auction catalog. They all, and SB Kothari also have the position number 79 for this thing. So, thank you, thank you. Thank you. E1836, and what Mr. Kothari is saying is 1837. So I'm sure that there was another watermark with this control number. I cannot claim it, it's a date, uh, year of issue or anything, but now until and unless we don't have any extra information, let it consider it as a control number. So 1837 and we, what I have is 1836 and my study is based on this watermark. So finally, I got uh, endorsed by all these people I went to Buckingham Palace to see the Royal Collection. I had a, an invitation from Michael Seffi, who was the keeper of the Royal Collection at that time. And then I published the uh, preliminary article in India Post when Sandeep was uh, the editor. And then addenda with, when I discovered the reversed one on a watermark and another addenda when I discovered the usage in Pondicherry and usage in Aden. Finally, I compiled a big article with nearly eight to 10 pages and published in London Philatelist. In the Germany, they have FGI, I call it India Study Circle in Germany, and the name of the magazine is Indian Report, and they also published this article in English as well as in German. Stanley Gibbons started showing this watermark from uh, 2017 in their catalog. Here is a letter from Buckingham Palace, what I received, and in the Stanley Gibbons catalog from 2017 onwards, you can see that the watermark found the place in the catalog. The largest multiple I have in my collection, that is a strip of seven, and all I can say that this is the largest multiple, not only a largest multiple, but the multiple where every, every single stem has effect of the one on a watermark. And this can only occur only uh, in the center portion. So nearly two or three strip of seven can have this, uh, can enjoy this watermark altogether. Okay, going to the next slide. The strip of four, usage in Aden with the one on a watermark. Single example used in Pen Pondicherry with one on a watermark. And here we have some specimens from the Royal Collection. So this big block, actually this part 
block of 12 where I'm pointing my pointer was actually the head. And later Edward Danny Bacon found another strip of four belongs to the same group. So they added it to this, uh, to this piece. And uh, that's how they have now in their collection. And they believe that that is also the part of this one on a watermark sheet. Another pair. Okay, it's a policy matter that the keeper of royal collection always asks you to follow the guideline when you are allowed to use these images from Her Majesty's collection. You need to mention this, reproduce by gracious permission of Her Majesty the Queen to whom copyright belongs, which I have done. So there is no problem about it. And I had a chance to meet Her Majesty. And I say thank you. You, Your Majesty, personally as well. So in the end, we will discuss this again a little bit when it comes to this watermark. So on the right, sorry, on the right, which is the wrong and earlier published design. On the left, we have the correct watermark. So here you will see this Urdu characteristic, which is yuck, and they didn't have this Anna. So we have this yuck and Anna as well. Okay, now we already discussed this uh, flat top and the pointed top. So if you have a single example <clears throat> with the flat top, it clearly confirms and indicates that it belongs to the one on a watermark. If you have any portion with this Urdu characteristic, or that, then also again, it's one on a watermark. If you have a Gothic O like this, <clears throat> it's again one on a watermark. And the major discovery is because the usual spelling of the Anna was on every single stamp of the Anna value. I mean, in the beginning, all the four values that was with A double N A. So, this was a very simple assumption that it could be the A double N A only, but when the whole seat got discovered and we came to know that there was only one N in the Ana. When it comes to this Bengali inscription, you will notice some major changes here. The Ka, what they have written here, that's the Devanagari script. And here, actually it is a Bengali. looking at and examining this Urdu script where it is written from this side is stamp Hafiz. That's exactly the copy paste thing from the normal coat of arms watermark paper and, and not the one which came in the one on a watermark. In one on a watermark, the, the, the Urdu characteristics are not that longer underneath within the two circles and they are a bit short compared to the earlier published design. So from now onwards, people, I mean, Stanley Gibbons have accepted it, London Flatlist, we have an article and from now onwards, I request that this watermark has to be considered for the further study. And I'm sure that uh, someone else will come up with some new things in this and uh, we will have some more information. So in the beginning, I said that we are going to see, in the end, I'm saying what we have seen for refreshing your memory. So this all we have seen so far. As a result, I have 125 plus and still adding in my collection, including a strip of seven, which you have seen, strip of four, some block of four, strip of three, few pairs, many singles, and usages from Pondicherry and Aden. When it comes to Aden, I have both postmarks, the Aden numeral 124 and the 132 as well. 
of which only two examples known. And at the moment, they both are in my collection. I'm trying to gather the information, if any other information regarding banana watermark or usages abroad in particular, I am more than welcome to get it and study it further and take it to a new height. Thank you very much indeed. And any questions, feel free to ask. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, hello, this is Richard St. Clair. Uh, you referenced a book, The Silver Key to the Golden Treasure of Indian Philately by Jane and Kotari. Is that a good book? Is that a, a, an authoritative book or do you recommend it or has that been super? I, I strongly recommend that book. It's a very uh -huh. good book for Indian philately, particularly in this case, what they have seen, they have clearly returned. In this book also they have returned that nothing can be conclusively written for this watermark. However, we have this specimen block of 10 with 1B1837. So Mr. Kothari was also very honest and he didn't wrote anything, uh, you know, which can lay uh, the philatelist to the confusion. So this is a good book. There is a lot of information. They got India, pre-India section, they got post-India, they got pigeon mail, they got rocket mail, and a lot of other information. I strongly recommend that book for any beginner. It's a good book, indeed. Thank you. I am a beginner, <laughs> and I'm enjoying the book very much, <laughs> and I enjoy your presentation very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mark, and I have a question. Yeah, Deepak. Do you hear me? Okay. Oh, yes. Um, do you have an estimation or maybe an estimation of how many number of sheets that might be there? <laughs> uh, I tried actually, uh, actually me and Uttam, we tried together to figure out that how many seats actually used in Aden. Because when right. I discovered the first Aden strip of four and then some singles and a pair, and we tried to match the color group and try to reach to the conclusion and we published an article also in India Post that particularly in Aden, at least how many seats were supplied or what happened exactly. But uh, it, is, um, it is very difficult, you know, way back uh, 160 years, how can we figure out that how many seats were printed? All the quantities are the, which are the, uh, coming from the official figures like this, this is the number, this is the date of issue. That is everything is coming from the archives. So until and unless if anything is not mentioned in the archives regarding this particular watermark, we cannot reach to the conclusion, a strong conclusion. Obviously, imaginations are possible. No, my reasoning was you're saying that you have uh, about 125 specimens. I might have maybe 50 or so. The thing is how many duplicate from the same position you have seen, so at least that way, you would know yeah. if you have duplication yeah, I mean, from if the same time, position. If time permits, if time permits, I can open up every single piece I have in the Google Drive and uh, share okay. with you guys. And yes, it's a very, very sensible thing what you are talking here is that from the same position, if it is coming, okay, right. then we can at least uh, try to uh, start counting that how many seats are exit. So, yeah. Particularly when it comes to O, the Gothic O later. Let me show you. Uh, one you second. Martin that are saying, please do share. So. Uh, absolutely, please. I need, oh yeah, I, I have to go back. Yeah, so Deepak, this O, okay, yes. I have seen yes. nearly seven examples. Hars okay. Gupta also has, I think, two or three examples from this position. And uh, from this broad A position, I have seen seven examples. So this is what I have seen quite duplicating, what I can say, and which is uh, very relevant to your question. Got it. Okay. And also, uh, one other thing is... Uh... You showed a block of 16 uh, of the mint from the Royal Collection. Yeah. Uh, if you can go back to that slide. Uh, okay. If it's easy for you, if it's not too much. Yeah, so. Not quite difficult. So here you go. Wonderful. There, there it is. Now, this sheet, if you see, almost a tenth of the watermark is uh, 
outside the sheet. So yeah, that's true. That's if true. We, if so we replicate, usually, I can tell you, yeah. I can, I can, I can do something here to give you an idea that what happens. So the printing area usually starts from here, where I'm pointing my pointer. Okay, and it is ending there. If it is upwards printing, if it is downwards printing, then you know it is missing all this area. It is right. quite a quite a large legal size, I can say approximate legal size sheet, big watermark sheet. So there is a lot of area is out of the printing. Right, right. No, because I have a complete sheet of the Tuana and I'm looking at it and uh, Actually, yeah, the printing, if it's shifted, that would be the case. If the printing is shifted that much, you're right. Yeah, I, I need your help actually, because I want to prepare a color, correct uh, illustration of the normal sideways paper number three watermark. Correct. And okay. uh, which tracing, because in the Ali Dawson's book, what he is right. showing is the illustration of the paper right. number four which was used for, for the half ana, one ana, and four ana. So okay. at the moment, not a single literature has recorded the normal, right. simple design of the two ana stamp watermark, the normal right. paper number three, coat of arms, sideway watermark. Not a single literature is available. Yeah. Uh, at so least I... not known to me. At least not known to me. So it will be right. a great help to the, to the Indian philatelic students if we publish this normal design at least, and I need your help if you have a sheet. Absolutely. Uh, the thing is I have not been able to come up with, uh, with a clear picture like you. I've just taken a picture on a lighter background, which is not very conclusive. I, it's very hard to draw from there. So I have no, no, I've no. been trying. Let us talk let's, personally on this and we can no, figure out a way yeah, to take let's. a picture. Let the lockdown get finished. I will fly to I will fly to San Francisco and I will make it at your home. You're more well, more than welcome. That would be a ple pleasure. You know I'm very crazy for these things. You know. <laughs> You're always welcome. The consummate gentleman. We have a very patient individual, uh, Mr. Reddy. Mr. Reddy, uh, if you'll unmute your mic and go ahead and ask your question, uh, Mr. Gave, please. Hi, Marker. How are you? Hello, Tom. Nice to see you here. Yeah, Marker. So my question is that you know, in your uh, in your study, which I think lasted over a decade now, you mentioned once in your presentation that you found a sheet with that uh, B one eight three seven. What I want to know is if you found any other varieties which is not fit either into the coat of arms or into this one on a watermark uh, designs. I have nearly six to seven examples. I have categorized for a moment, unknown watermark. Still working on it for last 10 years. I don't know, maybe I can solve that puzzle in 10 days or another 10 years. So I have nearly seven examples, which are very strange, very weird. I cannot reach to the conclusion and I'm happy to share with all of you or anybody who is interested in the subject but they are going to shed some, some different light and it can lead us to a different direction maybe. So that is, a, that is an opportunity to study this subject further, Uttam. Yeah, so it is possible that other designs also did exist, right? Uh, don't want to say anything at this moment. Okay. <laughs> it's just a okay. my guess. Yeah, I asked that question because I also came across two examples which didn't fit into either one. So I was wondering. Oh uh, yeah. Also. So there you go. So there, there are there are some some hidden gems still in two annas. Okay, very good. Thanks, Mark. Nice presentation. Yeah, I want to say a little little about two annas uh, further. See, when I started uh, collecting two anna stamp. It was uh, available for just five to ten dollars. So I, first of all, I found it very cheap, and I started collecting. Nowadays, even it's increased to fifteen to thirty dollars. If you go on eBay, you can find it. I accumulated as many as I can, okay, and then I started doing the reconstruction. So I reconstructed it in sideways. I reconstructed it 
as inverted. I'm also working with reverse and in reverse and inverted watermark variety, all these things. I also started finding cancellations, finding different shapes, grouping them in the different uh, color group. And then there are errors as well, some flaws. However, this was uh, the typograph. So not that many errors like we have in lithograph, but we also have the pre-printing paper fold varieties in this stamp. And very important, if you are lucky during the accumulation period, you never know, you will find the one on a watermark as well. So guys, keep accumulating to Anas. Uh, Mr. Dave, it was, a, a, we, we have two folks who have raised their hands and I really appreciate that friends for your patience. Mr. Anil Reddy has a, a, a question for you. Uh, Mr. Reddy, if you don't mind unmuting yourself or I can unmute you. Thank you Hello, Mr. Reddy. Hi, Mark, and very good presentation. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. My great Thank pleasure you. to see you here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anil, did you have a question? No. Okay. Harsh Gupta. He had his hand up. Hello, Harsh. Nice to see Hi, you in the Zoom room. Hi, how are you? Good presentation, Martin. Thank you very much. Sometimes Let me someday. tell something about Harsh. Hars is uh, having a Rudrax collection, and that is the. It is not just a collection; it is a collection of the collections. So he is one of the biggest Indian philatelist, all I can say, and he's holding many, many collections on all the different serious subjects. So you, you name it, you get it. He has everything, and he has a good library and a very dear friend. So when I go on Sunday, we are sitting all day together. Is well, it correct, Hars? Thank you for the kind words, uh, Margaret. I have two questions for you. Yes, please. Uh, please. Permit me two questions. The first one is about the paper number, uh, the one ana paper. This is a fiscal paper, right? Yeah. What was it used for? It was used for the, uh, the registration of the property, etc. So it should not be difficult to find this paper, right? Uh, uh, I don't know. I cannot say anything, but I have not seen anyone I, so far. And Mr. Okay. Desai had not seen. And that's why he wrote that in absence of the complete sheet, nothing can be conclusively written. So it seems like it's quite very difficult, I can say. So uh, this was my first question. And the second question is uh, about even if you have a, even if you, have, uh, are, uh, you are able to get a paper, this fiscal paper without any printing, how can you associate that this was, this was the only paper and uh, maybe some other has been used or the B1837 is different or it's, it's always the same key number? No, I cannot say and I have clarified it that it is not always the same control number 1836 because Mr. Kotari has reported in that book that he has seen 1B1837. So there could be other numbers but, but until and unless anything comes up to our attention, we cannot comment blindly, you know, that's what I believe. So it's not necessary that it's always the one on a paper with the 1836, it could be 1837 or whatever. Yeah, it could be 1838 if you come up with it. Okay. And uh, thank you so much for this uh, information, Margaret. Uh, this will help thank me you a lot. Heidi, uh, Heidi. Hey hey yes. Uh, do, how much time we still have? We, we're, we're doing really well, Martin. We have 15 minutes. Okay, very good. I want to say something to the audience of the American Philatelic Society. So here, when I was showing this, the social media information and contact. So whenever you have presentations, I mean, today I can see how many participants now, 58, it went once it reached to 67. So it's a good attention, attendance today here. So what we are using here in India to promote it on this all social media platforms. And if anybody has a question, even after this presentation, you are more than welcome to contact me using any of these platforms. And uh, 
Uh, I will try my best to answer your questions. What happens if you put all these things in social media? You know, people are well informed. Create some nice graphics like this. My friend Naveen from Bangalore helped me to prepare this. And if you can really reach to the person that what is going to happen with this way of presentation, and then you receive a very good thank you like this. Bye-bye. <laughs> so the social media and the graphics and all these things together works well and it brings more people, you know? We have to reach to them in a proper way. Thank you, Martin. Yes, right now is certainly the time. The, the iron is hot, as they say. So um, <laughs> it's quite an awesome experience to have this. Now, we're going to continue to move on. I really appreciate all the patience of our, our audience. We have a question from Mr. David Sachs. Thank you again, Mr. Sachs, for your patience. My question is, who designed or engraved the watermark? Was it a stationer? Who designed and engraved the paper? It was uh, not engraved in India. All I can say the coat of arms paper was engraved, the normal one on which the stamps are printed. That was engraved uh, in England. And that is the reason that the supply didn't allow, uh, arrived to India and they started using the stock, what they have here in India. And that's why they use this fiscal paper of the one on a watermark. May I come in with a comment? Mark, uh, Mr. Mark Bailey has also been patient. Mark, go ahead with your question, please. Yes, thank, thank you, Heidi. Mark and your, yes, Mark. Ex, your excellent uh, talk, incredibly thank detailed, you. really excellent. Why was it that the word Anna was spelt with only one N in the watermark? What's your opinion on that? I'm sorry, I missed you a little bit, Mark. Can I will repeat, repeat, my I will repeat my question. My question is, why, in your opinion, was the word Anna spelt with only one N in the watermark? Very good question. Thank you. Okay. Now... Uh, First of all, we looked at the double N, okay? Yes. And then when I came up with this sheet, I reached to the conclusion that it's single N. But I never say this is the single N only. Then I started examining my own specimens. And I have specimens where it is A, following A and A. And there is no second N. I referred to I referred to another paper which was published in London Philatelist by Sir Edward Denny Bacon, mm -hmm. where Edward Denny Bacon has produced the size of the Gothic letters O N E A N A. He also published the central design uh, size as well, the inner circle and the outer circle. If you draw it all together on a paper. There is no more space left for the second end to get accommodated within the inner circle. I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. Is this makes you happy, Mark? It makes me smile. It's good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. It's you. a good answer. It's a good answer. Thank you. Gary Lowe, our very own director of expertising, Mr. Dade, he has a question for you. Hey, good morning, Mark. And that was a great presentation. I learned a lot. And... Um, Got me interested to learn some more here. But early in your presentation, you were talking about the four rotational uh, positions that the paper could have been in uh, from the standpoint of the watermark, uh, normal, uh, inverted, reversed, reversed, inverted. And, and you made the observation that the, uh, the printing employee uh, weren't, weren't very focused on, um, uh, they either weren't educated or weren't trained properly, and that's the explanation. My question is whether postal authorities really cared about the position of the watermark paper, 
or is that something that, that just philatelists obsess over? Uh, in the United States, it's um, the case that um, during certain periods of time in, uh, uh, in, in printing, uh, postal authorities really didn't care. They wanted the paper to be right. They wanted the paper to adhere to standards and to have particular watermarks. But whether it was rotated or inverted is something postal authorities didn't care about. What was the situation with these stamps uh, and the Indian postal authorities? Did they care? Is One second, what happened? Is this the question with the present situation or for the early situation of 1854? For the period if you were talking about with, with those four uh, possible um, rotations of the paper, okay. did, they, did they care back then? Yeah, in 1854, see, it was just the beginning. So I clearly mentioned that the workers at the printing press were not uh, aware, not even informed or well-educated. They put like anything, either this way or that way. And for that reason, we have these watermark varieties. As soon as the next issue came up uh, in the printing and the De La Rue series, the watermark become, uh, they started uh, checking the watermark and they advised and uh, uh, the workers also to put it in the right direction. And also it was, uh, getting printed from England, and then it started more watermark accuracy. This watermark was for the whole sheet. And after the De La Rue came in the picture, then they started providing the watermark for every single stamp. So they were obviously monitoring all these things. And this was being printed in India, where all these watermark varieties occurred and the second printing, which started coming from London by De La Rue. And then we had more accuracy after that. Gautam Rothagi. Yeah. That's, that's helpful, thank you. Marco, thank you. I, I, I have a question, and that is very correct about the four variants of the watermark. But in my collection, I have a fifth variant, which is a tilted watermark. I don't know how that was possible, but I have that in the half anna, the one anna, and the two annas, which is not a lithographic printing at all. It is just a typograph. But I have a tilted sheet watermark. And, and that needs investigation and, and intense study. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy to happy learn to that you all it. are sitting on different treasures. And Gautamji, uh, you know that how curious I am to study all these things. So when we meet next, let's sit yeah. down and discuss and talk about this have, strange you things. A, you have a partial uh, diagonal orientation and that is very, very interesting indeed. I can understand that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But without looking it, I cannot comment I anything. Have, so I, have put in, I have put in some images on the, of the one Anna in my book, but the others I have still. Mm. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Martin, we have a question from Anup Kumar Goyal. Uh, was the Ek Anna written in Bengali instead of Hindi in the watermark paper? Say it again, what's that? Why was the Ek Anna written in Bengali instead of Hindi in the watermark paper? Oh, Ek Anna in Bengali because uh, of the East India Company situated in Calcutta and uh, Muniruddin was there and a uh, lot of uh, what I can say, a lot of all the British uh, archives, if you refer, in the early days, the Bengali was uh, also one of very important language in early days. And, uh, and the second one was Urdu as well. And however, after we had that uh, uh, end of the Mughal period and the Britishers came, they came up with the English language. So we also had the Urdu in the beginning. And then Gradually, eventually, everything got disappeared, and then only the English remained. And I'm peering around for any hands up or questions that I have not gotten to. Rajesh, go ahead. Rajesh Shekhar, Himala. Just yep. enable your microphone and ask. Yeah, Russia. Kapil also. Kapil, you are next. 
Raja Shekhar has got a question. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, friends. We have about five more minutes. Thank you. We're going to unmute. There you go, sir. Everybody can hear me? Yes, sir. Maybe you can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will answer your question in person because your audio is not good, unfortunately. But thanks for the question. We will. Uh, I will answer you personally. Kapil, you want to say something? That's it. I wanted to congratulate. It was a very beautiful presentation. The PPT was digitally designed very well, excellent. Keep going. Thank you. And thank you, American okay. Athletic Society and Hedy for such a beautiful and wonderful presentation and a meeting. Thank okay, you. thank you, Kapil. Ravi Nanda. Ravi, how are you? I can see you. We're going to unmute Mr. Nanda. There okay. we are. Go. Mr. Nanda, start speaking. In pretty good. I really enjoyed your presentation. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting on a lot of two Anas and uh, <laughs> I, I know you, you know how many I have, but so I'm going to go and look at them. You know, I got a couple of thousand of those, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nanda. Yeah, Harsh, really. you, uh, you raise your hand. Harsh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark, and if you can please go to that slide again, the, the, the from the Royal Collection, the block, block of 16. Or the block of 12, yeah. I think it's block of 12. Let me see if I can go that quickly. Okay. Yeah, so the top the top line where we, where we it's written postage stamp, this does not, it's not a block, it's 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 uh, these are two two pieces, right? Okay, so when I was I was giving the presentation, I clearly mentioned that initially yes, it was a block of 12. And then later, this strip was discovered by Edward Danny Bacon, and he added no, to the collection. I, I strongly doubt that this strip belongs to this because it, the paper no, cannot can, be so much printed. Paper okay, cannot I be can so tell you. I can tell you that I cannot doubt Sir Edward Danny Bacon. I have a great respect and high regards and believe in his knowledge. So I cannot doubt at least. Because uh, Martin, sure. logically, if the, if this strip is belonging to this, the paper will come out of the stone. Or wherever uh, the, the, this is typographed, sorry. So it will come out of the press. It's so much misaligned. No, Harz, I have seen this example personally in the Royal Collection in London and uh, with in presence of Michael Seffi. And we all are of opinion that what Edward Danny Bacon has discovered is completely correct. And it is also mentioned in the Royal Collection what you have, the big uh, red, group, uh, red book. So you can use it as a reference. And if you have a chance to go to London, let me know. I will arrange that you get an access to see it. And I'm sure you will be convinced after seeing it in, pers uh, in person. Yeah, thank you for that opportunity, Martin. Thanks. You are always welcome, Harsh. Well, We've blown through another incredible hour of stamp chat. I'd like to bid all of my friends from around the world uh, a, a, a heartfelt appreciation for your time and for joining us and for checking us out here at the American Philatelic Society. Mark and Dave, you are a consummate gentleman and, and just a, a terrific uh, uh, personality in the, in the world of philately. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your, your passion. It, it really speaks volumes in, in each word that you choose. So thank you so much. Friends, we do have uh, membership available, of course, internationally. It's $65 per year to join the American Philatelic Society or $45 if you choose to receive the, the great, uh, the American Philatelist magazines digitally. So please do consider joining the American Philatelic Society. Go visit stamps.org for membership. We do have our stamp chats Monday through Friday at various times. And I understand that there's a large time difference between us, but you can always go to YouTube to, to find our stamp chats archive there. I put my email in the chat box. It's Heidi 
at stamps.org, H-E-I-D-I at stamps.org. Should you choose or desire to get in touch with me regarding future talks or if you need me to help you connect, but do know that Mark and Dabe and I and other members of the philatelic, philatelic community are, are really working behind the scenes to continue to unite us all. This is a very unique opportunity in history for us to move digitally and virtually and connect. That's exactly what stamps do is they unite us and they're peacemakers. So I, I thank you all for being a part of Stamp Chat and for being a part of this incredible community. Namaste from the United States. Thanks again, Mr. Namaste Martin. from India. I really appreciate Namaste it. From thank, India. You, friends. thank you, friends. Please join us again for another Stamp Chat tomorrow at 3 p.m. We'll have Dr. Uh, Richard Morrow uh, from the British Library. Please join us for that incredible talk. Thank you uh, and, and, and stay healthy, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank Thanks you. For coming. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Kapil, bye. Mark, Eric, okay. Boogie okay. Meta. Bye bye. Bye, 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 everybody. Thank Thank you. Anup Goel. Kapil. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Heidi. Bye, Mark. Thanks, Narkan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Mark and in the comments. Thank you. Tremendous accolades. So I hope you'll look over in the chat box before we end the meeting. Okay, I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Eddie. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.